I'm very, very excited to be here uh, this morning. Um, um, the first day of Zero Project, and uh, I'm very happy uh, to have amazing speakers as we're just introduced, and we will reintroduce them later on. Before I begin, uh, I would like to uh, share a couple of accessibility notes for this uh, session. We have, first of all, uh, captioning provided by uh, Verbit. You have uh, international sign language um, uh, with us. And uh, if you have any questions, any comments, and for whoever knows me knows I mean it, and whoever doesn't, please take my word for it. I want you to comment. I want you to talk. I want you to share what you feel, what you want to ask. Uh, use the, the, the uh, Zero Project platform chat box and uh, send us whatever your thoughts are. And to make this even more accessible, I am inviting all my speakers, uh, uh, as I am doing right now, to give a visual description of themselves just before they begin uh, speaking for all our um, uh, people with visual disabilities that are joining us. So I'm Michal Rimon. I'm the proud CEO of Access Israel. I always use that phrase when I begin uh, um, conferences and webinars. I am uh, a white female with uh, brown or blondish uh, hair, a uh, black shirt and a necklace. And I can uh, tell you that in the back of me, there's a, an amazing picture, uh, the most accessible picture in Israel, a picture that was uh, drawn in memory of uh, Neta Rotman, who, believe me, it is her birthday today. She would have loved to be here. Um, uh, we are, unfortunately, uh, uh, three years almost uh, after we uh, uh, lost her. But her spirit, and the truth is, this, conf this uh, panel is exactly uh, uh, for her, dreaming dreaming and fulfilling the dreams. So seven years ago, uh, I attended my first Zero Project conference. It's pretty crazy and amazing when you think about it, how time flies. Uh, I came for the first time with Neta to learn from the world. And to tell you the truth, I was in awe. I was hearing all the inspiring and ground shaking projects, innovations and policies from all over the world. and. It made me feel on the one hand, small, but on the other hand, it made me understand that I also have some amazing things to share and I need to find the right way, the right platform to share it in. Well, Zero Project showed me this platform. Zero Project encouraged me to dream. This is my seventh consecutive Zero Project conference. Can you count how many inspirations I met and heard over the years. When we were offered the opportunity to lead a session of our choice this year in this digital amazing conference, I knew this would be the perfect opportunity for the Dream Big panel I had been speaking to my dear, dear friend Caroline about a couple of months ago. Martin Luther King said, I have a dream. During these three days, you will hear amazing people dreaming and sharing their dreams. The six panelists we have today are especially known for dreaming big. Now, before I introduce the first speaker, I would like to say something to each and every one of you. Many times we sit in audiences hearing amazing speakers and not really believing that we can make a difference. Well, you can, but it's not just a matter of can I, it's a matter of how can I? And this, I hope, is what we're going to learn today. So let's hear from our speakers what their dreams are. The first round of questions I'm going to introduce uh, my dear, dear friend, Martin Essel, who started this all. So please, Martin, what is your dream? The most, the most uh, talked uh, phrase in 2020, Martin, you are muted, please. Thank you. I have a dream. I have a dream that one day we will live in a world without barriers, a world in which all of us can live up to our dreams and to our full potentials. I have a dream that we all create a new renaissance after Corona where nobody is left behind. Good 
Thank you, Martin. Yeah, sorry, I was muted also. Thank you very much. And I think that we're all part of this fulfillment of your dream. Um, uh, and I would like to invite my next dreamer. Uh, and again, I'm Yeti is the name, but I'm going to say the full name and I hope I won't uh, uh, make mistakes in pronunciation. Yetnebresh Nigusi. She's a senior manager of the Global Action on Disability GLAD Secretariat from Ethiopia. And by the way, she is the first amazing person I met at Zero Project seven years ago. So for me, again, this panel is all about closing uh, uh, circles. Please, Yeti, we'd love to hear your dream. You are, yeah. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Michael, and likewise, it's, it's fantastic to be in touch again for the eighth year and for the, this digital conference. I have a dream, and thank you for asking a blind person to share a dream, which always comes as a joke, do blind people dream? So I have a dream that one day this world will turn into truly equal through the path of quality and inclusive education. I believe that children with, dis children with disabilities, if learned, playing, growing together, and we can naturally and organically uh, plant equality and inclusion to the society. So I have a dream that one day, all the education being catered for in this world will be of quality and inclusion to lead us into a real accessible and inclusive. Thank you very much for that, Yeti. Um, uh, and I will go through the dreamers quickly because we want to get to the um, uh, tips to hear how to fulfill these dreams. And I will, uh, I'm very happy to invite my dear friend, Caroline, who, by the way, Caroline, I think that moderating the amazing ZP, Zero Project moderator, I think is uh, um, already a fulfillment of one dream of mine. So let's hear it for you. What's your dream? Are you going to take over from me or are we going to co-do it together? I think we should co-do it. Um, so very quickly, for those of you like me, visually impaired, I have blonde hair. I'm a white female from Ireland. I'm sitting beside my washing machine, which you can't see. And I'm wearing an electric green 1960s shirt. Um, my dream is that you will never have to see me speak very soon. Um, and the, the reason that would happen is the Valuable 500 community, which we have built and created we are about to launch them onto phase two to do a global hack and to use the power of the 500 CEOs, their procurement and supply chains, their brands and their employees to integrate, infuse disability business inclusion so it is normalized and so it is real and so it is mainstreamed and that you will not have to have Caroline Casey hustling in front of you. That is my dream. Amazing, amazing. Thank you. Our next dreamer, Rama Jiraho. I never know how to say a last name, sorry. He is the director of the Helen Hamlin Center for Design in the UK and a leader in the field of inclusive design. Rama, my dear friend, please. Thank you, Mikhail, and so honored to be here um, today. Um, I am uh, a male. Um, in my 40s with a beard. Um, I have brown skin and black hair. And I um, spent quite a long time color coordinating this sort of lilac top with the background. I had to repaint my wall to match the top. Um, absolutely passionate about something called inclusive design, which is just including the widest number of people in everything that you do. And my dream is to really take the emotional, intellectual, personal, and human sting out of the word other. Other separates. Other is something that happens to someone else, such as another disability, another age, another gender, another race. And when we live by underneath the burden of that word other, we forget that what connects us is truly inclusive and empathic, and that is that we're all human. So um, I just wanted to end with end my dream with words from 
Richard Bach, the American author, because why say something when someone else said it better? And he said, if you are, here's a, here's a test to find out if your purpose on earth is over. If you're alive, it isn't. So if we're alive and we're human, we don't need to be talking about other. We just need to be inclusive. Amazing. Thank you very much. Hector Minto, my dear friend, and you can say only the dream now because we will put you first in the tip uh, cycle. Uh, Hector is a senior accessibility evangelist of Microsoft um, uh, and an amazing thought leader in the accessibility field. Hector, please dream on. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mikhail, and thank you, Martin and Zero Project, for bringing me back again. I'm always honoured to come and speak with you. Uh, I wore my uh, United Nations top in honour of the many years uh, I've come across to Vienna to spend time with you. Uh, I'm a bald white male in his 40s, still in my 40s, uh, uh, and I am speaking to you from my office here in Oxford, and I have an array of disability art behind me, which uh, is a big passion of mine. Uh, okay, so. My, my dream is for all organizations, large and small, to move beyond the return, on, the return of investment argument or the risk mitigation around disability inclusion. Disability inclusion is something that needs to be in every organization if we're going to keep evolving society. Uh, diverse organizations where we don't think, think about designing for some other, as Rama says, but where we start thinking about our colleagues, our friends, our loved ones. You know, when you think about whether something is accessible or not, and you're thinking about this person that you don't understand and that you've never heard of and that you don't know, then you don't deliver inclusion and accessibility. It's only when you ask yourself as an organization, where are you on disability inclusion? Where is your voice of disability in your organization? And how do we allow it to live and breathe and be heard within our organization? Will you move forward? I want people to recognize that disability innovation has moved has always moved society on from emojis to word prediction to the telephone to things that we take for granted in society around us they came from disability first and nobody asked where is the return of investment they happened because they were problem solving there and then and i think with rama's uh, insight on this you'll you'll absolutely move forward on this but i also want us to recognize that there's a generation who care about social justice coming through. And I want us as accessibility and disability leads to recognize this as a social justice issue and meet people where they are. Don't Let's not try and be the experts in the room. Let's meet them where they are and understand the commitments they want to make to us towards disability inclusion. Totally. I agree with you. Now, um, uh, my next dreamer and final for this round is my personal dreamer. When he calls me in the evening or at night and says, hi, I have an idea, I know my next month is going to be crazy, uh, making his amazing ideas into reality. So Yuval, please. First of all, uh, thank you. I'm a, a bold uh, white uh, man. Uh, sorry, but I'm in the 50s. <laughs> But I feel young and um, a great challenges ahead of us. But I, before, before I share my dream, I want to uh, share uh, and tell you that dreams are fulfilled. Dreams will come true if you really believe in them. And this is the basic that you have to know because I actually already know that in a fact that some of my dreams were fulfilled here in Israel where we have now legislation for Israel accessible. We dream that all websites in Israel will be accessible, and they are. So now is my future dream. We all understand that in the future, in the near future, actually right now, we live daily using technologies in our homes, working, education, health, Anything we'll do in the future is based on using technologies, either directly or services based on technologies. And my dream is making sure people with disabilities all around the world, all kinds of disabilities will have in the future tech era, all technologies fully accessible in advance making sure that the future 
will not be with amazing social gaps, rather fully inclusive and accessible in advance for people with disabilities. And we will achieve it, not only by my dream, but working on that all together. Thank you very much. And I think that the last uh, year, since last year's uh, Zero Project, technology has uh, basically filled our lives and uh, we have been uh, dependent on it for so many things. Uh, so I definitely uh, hope uh, your future and your dream is, is here and it's going to uh, uh, happen. So uh, first of all, it's a, it's a dream that we're on time. It's exactly the time uh, um, uh, we plan to be and I'm not used to it, so I'm... Uh, Re recalculating what I'm saying. In any case, these are all amazing dreams. But the reason I invited our inspirational speaker uh, is that these guys don't only dream big, but they are also succeeding in making their dreams a reality. And it was important for us, as always, not to just inspire and share dreams, but be practical. Anyone who participates in Access Israel's international webinars, and you're all invited, of course, to contact us and add yourself to the invitees, knows that we like being practical. And the Hebrew word, and I uh, learned from uh, Martin and Michael that uh, it's also in German and uh, in Austrian, tachlis, let's be practical. Yeti told me uh, when, uh, when we spoke before this session, uh, uh, she gave a, a really uh, powerful uh, statement. She said, let's take Martin Luther King's message of I have a dream to the next level and understand how we can make the dreams come true. So let's hear it from you guys. You're amazing dream and fulfiller uh, makers. Uh, what are your tips for making your dreams come true? Martin, please. Uh, my uh, opinion is that innovation is the fertilizer of change. But uh, do not try to do anything by your own. Uh, have your mission, but think and act in partnerships. Very important in our community. Nobody can change anything on her own or his own. Uh, think in networks like the Zero Project and use them more intensively and think about nothing about us without us. Thank you so much, Martin. And I know that this message is something that Caroline always says in the opening uh, remarks of Zero Project. Uh, when we are face to face, she encourages all to talk, to approach. No one is unapproachable. You can contact everybody, you can come to everybody, you can talk, you can share, you can create these partnerships and networks that uh, Martin is talking about. And I think this is definitely a great tip and a good, uh, you're, you're practicing what you're preaching uh, and we see it. Uh, and I think this panel is part of uh, the success of what you are uh, uh, suggesting here. So it's definitely a great, great tip, Martin. Thank you very much. And uh, now I would like to invite Yeti, please. Uh, Yeti, now what I is would your... like to invite Yeti, please. Yeti, what is your... uh, thank you, Michael. Maybe first I should I should compensate on describing myself for the, those who cannot see us uh, or see me. <clears throat> so I am a black uh, female and I am just winding up 30s. <laughs> and I'm sitting in a uh, corner of uh, my bedroom. I'm not sure what's the color of my shirt. Maybe you can compliment it later, but I think it's white plus black, whatever. I don't know. I've never cared about colors. So anyways, coming to the tips of getting our dreams. It's really fantastic and uh, very timely to say that Zero Project is a place where we turn dreaming also into teaming, uh, as uh, Martin was uh, fantastically uh, pointing it out. We team with others, you know. The, the, I call it the life chain. They call it the value chain in business. And Carolyn can talk about it later. But she was talking about the supply chain and things like that too. The first tip I have in life is that every chain starts small. No change, whether it be in the Microsoft, whether it be in the Zero Project, starts big. It only grew bigger and bigger and bigger. So don't think that the change you can bring is so small. 
you are the one responsible to feed it and plant it and grow it, show it bigger, but always start small. And the second tip I want to share with our viewers is that make sure that you continuously monitor your dream, making sure that you're going into the right direction. Every action that you take is contributing or bringing you closer to what you dream. For example, I can say that when I started my school in Ethiopia, my private kindergarten in Ethiopia, I only had three children out of which two were disabled and one was non-disabled. Now we have more than 25 with a disability and the rest 375 without disability. So we had it and now we're just planting our tutor online for all the children with disabilities in the schools because we knew that COVID-19 left them behind when they were locked at home. Parents did not know what to do. So we just created an application to help all children with disabilities with different programs. And then now all of them are getting this into their homes, whether they belong to our school or not. So just make sure that whatever you do is taking you closer. Make sure that you take your GPS of your dream to make sure that you are on time. Thank you very, very much, Yeti. Um, it, it, it truly, truly inspiring and, 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 uh, and a great tip. Hector, please, what is Thank your you. tip? So I, I was dropped into Microsoft UK uh, away from our corporate headquarters five years ago with the job of making accessibility matter at scale at Microsoft. Uh, and we've always been good at accessibility and disability inclusion, but I would say that like any organization, we suffered a little bit from the, the, the challenge of what was happening at headquarters being very different to what was happening out in the world out there. Microsoft's been through a journey to get braver on talking to its customers about accessibility. And if you think about the influence that Microsoft can potentially have across banking, retail, health, education, the opportunity is massive, but even a company like Microsoft perhaps lacked confidence to go and talk about disability. And confidence is all to do with people being scared of the unknown, being scared of like getting it wrong. And this mindset of getting it wrong or fear of failure is what holds us back in this world. Uh, I've learned this from Caroline. Yeah. So my plan from the very start was write down your five years of success, show people what it could look like and, and put the dream out there in the steps year one, year two, year three, year four, and five. And then I would ask your stakeholders to meet you where they are on a number of different topics. Knowledge, Get the bedrock of information into your colleagues around what disability inclusion is. How does a blind person read an email? You know, if they don't know, they can't help you. So there's this basic knowledge level that everybody has to get to. The second thing is ask them about the representation they have in their team. And if they don't know, get them to ask. I have discovered amazing disability talent globally at Microsoft that was hidden that wasn't talking about what it wanted to do in its team and wasn't empowered to move their agenda forward. And we have now given them this safety net and you know, to know that we need their opinion and we need their talent to be exposed within their organization. And we're starting to see it bubbling up through the organization. But those managers and those people, people, people managers around Microsoft suddenly realized they already had disability in their team and it was talent that they couldn't do without. And this gives them the confidence to bring more people with disabilities into the fabric of our organization. And the second thing is, don't claim you know it all. Allow people to share their ambitions with you. Yeah. So what we've learned at Microsoft is that I'm not an expert in buildings. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm not an expert in HR processes. But as soon as we created a culture and a culture of communication and representation, people who are experts in what they do have come to us with their ambitions and we've been able to support them to move it forward. So share your plan, but allow other stakeholders to show you what they want to do within their part of the business. And my last tip, and I'm really sorry, I have to jump off. I'm so sorry, Mikhail, I'm so sorry, Martin. Uh, but what I would say to you is always jump on the latest, greatest new narrative. So at the moment, artificial intelligence is a huge topic in the technology world, and we're funding amazing projects through our AI for Accessibility program, but that has allowed us to find this amazing innovation, as Martin talks about, that's the lifeblood of keeping us moving forward on this, on this topic. But it's not just always the latest, greatest tech. We're, we're now talking much more about things like frontline workers being the missing link in digital society, people who, who worked in first-line jobs, uh, 
didn't have access to email, didn't have access to online training. They weren't really invested in because they were seen as collateral out there in the world around us. This newfound respect we have for people who work in frontline roles is really starting to bubbling up, bubble up. And so I'm jumping on that because we can see that's where a lot of the energy and the attention is going to go now. Let's make sure disability comes out within those new agenda items as well. So write down your five steps, meet people where they are on knowledge, representation, and ambition, and align with existing narratives. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Hector, and uh, good luck in your next meeting. It's uh, a Zoom world after all. Or so a, sorry. <laughs> a Teams, uh, world after all. Um, uh, thank you very much for that. Um, uh, and uh, now uh, to uh, my uh, next streamer, uh, Caroline. You are on the verge of making it uh, to fulfilling your dream that we have been talking about for uh, uh, so long. How many uh, companies are already on Valuable 500? Um, as of this morning, 425. Wow, wow, wow. We're getting yeah. there. And I know about many that are, you know, on their way. So uh, any representatives of large companies who, uh, who can join, listen, think fast, do fast, act fast, because uh, the list will close, I have no doubt, because you are a fulfiller of dreams. How do you do it, Caroline? Well, um, I have a life lived as a dangerous dreamer. And the reason I say this uh, and taking up from what Hector spoke about is I have pretty much fulfilled a huge amount of my dreams that everybody said that were impossible for lots of reasons. The Valuable 500, I was told there is absolutely no way. Who do you think you are to launch it on the main stage of Davos to get 500 of the world's most influential CEOs and their brands? You are mad. I had to remortgage a home and a house. And there's a secret, two secret ingredients, but the one is it's in my DNA. And I'm going to kind of copycat Rama a bit. And there's a quote um, that I love. All men dream, all men and women dream, but not equally. There are those of us who dream at night in the dusty recesses of our mind. And we wake in the day and think it was vanity. And there are other of us who dream in the days with our eyes wide open. And therefore, we are the dangerous men and women. And for me, that is somebody who doesn't just dream, but they do. They're not daydreaming at a way. They're making an intention, no matter what happens, no matter how hard it is that you don't give up. And that is the name of the book that I'm writing because I kind of want to say this tip for anybody out there who has an idea. You don't have to be Richard Branson to make it happen. You don't even have to be Martin Nessel. You just need your life not to be defined by anything. Not where you come from, not whether you have a disability, not from your success, not from your failure. And if you hold that dream that you have and not let it be defined by anything, but let it go to evolve and to emerge and to be flexible, you have some chance. Defined by nothing is the possibility of everything. And then I want to say something really funny and silly because none of you know, maybe Michael particularly and Martin who saved me, there have been very dark moments in making dreams happen. And I'm pulling my hair back for those of you who don't notice. And I'm wearing a pair of earrings that look, they're electric yellow and look like a lightning bolt. And all the way in my life of making dreams happen, I've carried talismans. Sometimes to remind me that when I'm lonely, scared, frightened, that I keep that dream close to my heart. It can be a song. It can be a crazy shirt. It can be a text message from a friend saying not to give up. But make sure that you have those touchstones always to that dream because your dream is the roar from your soul. And that roar from your soul is your right. And it is your choice. And so what I say is be defined by nothing, have those talismans and choose to be a dangerous dreamer because that's when the good stuff comes. Amazing, totally. And uh, just for our viewers from countries uh, where English is not uh, a first language, I didn't know what a talisman is and I looked it up. So it's a good luck charm. Yes. Sorry, a good luck charm. British yes. English speakers. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I was born and raised in America. I never heard that word, but good luck charm I definitely have. And it's a great, great uh, um, uh, tip. Uh, perfect. Next, Rama, dear Rama. How do we fulfill dreams? 
So I, I feel like I might be paraphrasing um, Caroline here because a great admirer of what, what, she, what she does and who she is, um, you know, and as with, with everyone around here, you know, the personal stories really drive through. I'm going to say three quick things, but they come with a health warning. Um, and the health warning is, is I'm extremely biased when I say this. Um, I'm biased as a human being, I'm biased as an empath, and I'm biased as an introvert and a creative. Um, the first thing to say is include design. Um, the world around us is designed, you know, everything around us is designed, has been through a design decision. And that design decision can exclude or include. So include design in um, your activities, designers can make things real. Um, designers can walk through walls and inclusive design, which is the um, subject of the center I lead at the Royal College of, of Art is about including people of all ages, abilities, genders and races. And even within disability, there's such a, 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 a you know, especially within disability, there's such a range of age, gender, culture, background, and circumstance. So we need to be open-armed and inclusive. The second thing is um, thinking about a simple phrase. What's the most important phrase in the English language? And Hollywood or Bollywood ha would have you believe that it's I love you. I was thinking about this and I think I love you too is important because if you say I love you and no one says it back, it's a bit embarrassing. But there is a word, there is a phrase that's even more important than that. And that is, I see you. I see you. I see who you are, what you are and how you are is incredibly important. 20 something years ago, the first time I ran a workshop and with a group of people that were in a wheelchair, um, you know, I was introduced and it was said, here's Rama, he's a designer, and Rama, here are the wheelchair users. So I thought, okay, wheelchair users, what does that mean? Started talking to this guy and what he turned around and said to me, I asked him what was important to him, thinking it would be something functional. He basically said, I'm 16, I can now get a tattoo legally. Um, you're a designer, can you help me design a tattoo? That's what's important to me and I want it to be in the shape of my samurai sword. And it just blew me away that I didn't see him. I saw the wheelchair and that was me 25 years ago. So I see you is incredibly powerful personally and professionally and in terms of stepping beyond this word other. And the final point is really about leadership. I'm writing a book now on leadership because most of what we're taught about leadership is wrong and most of it gets in the way of a truly inclusive world. So I have this impossible dream, but the, uh, um, um, which is around um, addressing leadership. It's like Lord of the Rings, you address leadership and you address the other things that are wrong. So it's one ring to rule them all and it's leadership. And finally, um, just to say, you know, Caroline, you inspired me to, quote another another poem that has since I was 14 introvert could not feel like I had a place in the world or could speak to people and I don't know whether that was the color of my skin or the quietness in my voice but my mother gave me a poem that speaks to the fact that nothing is impossible if you just start and it's from India's poet laureate Tagore it's a very short um, uh, uh, poem, Mikhail. I'm not going to quote quote pages. It's but it's um, it's this: Who will take up my work? Asked the setting sun, and throughout the land, no one answered. Alone in the corner, dusty and forgotten, the earthenware lamp said, "I will, my lord, as best I can." And that for me is, is just saying you don't need to be the sun, the moon or the stars. You can be an earthenware lamp. You can carry your talismans, carry, carry your dreams, carry your intentions, and they will become action. And more than that, the world will stop and listen 
and join you, you will conspire to actually help you. So that's been my, 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 my finding. Wow, amazing. And I'm, I'm here uh, going to uh, ask on behalf of uh, many people listening uh, these, these inspiring poems, because what you're saying, we're going to place and, and spread the word uh, totally. But the poems, if you can write us in the chat of uh, the Zoom and we will uh, forward it to the Zero Project chat. I think these are inspiring words, really, really inspiring words. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, whenever I'm asked what, uh, what my dream is, I always say that uh, I meet so many amazing people um, uh, in, 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 as part of my work. Um, you know, we consider them Superman, superheroes, super speakers, super, super, super. And what I really want is for people with disabilities not to be looked as either childish or superhero, but just as a person. Uh, and, and your tattoo example is a great, uh, uh, is a great uh, example for that. Uh, Yuval, Thank what you. is your tip for today? Uh, you know, I'll hear one for tomorrow and the day after that, but for today, what is your tip? First, it's an uh, inspiring um, panel to be with all of you. And I would like to continue from uh, what Rama is talking about, uh, and it's about leadership. You know, everyone can dream, and we believe that every dream can be fulfilled. But over here in this panel, we are talking about dreams that are supposed to change the world, to make a change that is global, change that will, that will affect the biggest minority in the world. So for that, you need leadership. Now, all of us, what's unique about all of us is that we are many, many years in this business of accessibility, people with disabilities, inclusion, design. So we have a lot of experience and knowledge that we gathered through those years that, you know, at least I feel that this, 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 there is this, this point that you inside understand that you can see better or enlightened the future. And this is the point where you have your dream. And when you have your dream and you truly believe that you can achieve it, then you have to go to actually to the next question, how are you going to do it? And I think when you go to that stage, the first thing that, that actually happens that you are consulting with friends, with colleagues, with other professionals. Mm -hmm. And then the next most important thing, I think, and we all use it, but it's basics and it's a must do and you can't do without it, is all about our awareness. Because if people, if you don't make the awareness about your cause, about your mission, about your dream, and they don't understand you, they don't understand that the importance of your dream, you will not get there. So awareness and making the case is very important. And last, and this is Hector talked about it, is the method, is the implementation, is actually how are you going to do it? What do you mean by making that? For example, I can share with you that for, for, for my dream, from Access Israel dream, making the future tech era accessible, after we deal with the awareness, we know that we're actually making the, making the future ecosystem, the future accessible ecosystem. And other than that, we have a full program, step by step, how to actually fulfill it. And so at the end of the day, dream is great, but after you dream, you have to make sure you have leadership, awareness, and, and a method and implementation. And lastly, I truly know that if we dream and share, it's achievable. It's a lot of hard work, no shortcuts. As Carolyn said, there are many, many bad days, 
but we only need a few good days to fulfill our dreams. And our dreams, and I'm talking on behalf of probably all of us, are life-changing for so many people. And I think that's what motivates us to keep on doing it daily by daily for so many years. No weekends, no nights, we hardly sleep, we work on this you know, endlessly because we know that we're doing something that is important. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yuval. Um, uh, we have a, a question from, uh, from the chat, um, which I'm, I'm putting on the table and let's see who wants to pick it up and you can also uh, um, uh, all answer for this. We are all dreamers and have shared vision of inclusion and are excited by this vision. But how do we ensure that others who have never given inclusion much thought are on board? How do we bring them on board? Any thoughts on that, dear dreamers? How do we convince people who are not? Uh, I think, uh, Caroline, you're doing it every day, don't you? You're on mute. I'm being good. Um, I, I think, or I've learned, how about I, I've learned? It's not enough to be right. There's this expression, how's right working out for you, okay? And sometimes when you have these dreams that you have a particular message or a way and that doesn't land, and then you've got to try again and try again and try again. For me, it's about trying to, to see people where they're at, as Hector said, and find the language that is connecting or relating to them, whether it's through design, through Rama, or technology with Yuval and Hector, or through education with Yeti, or finding that sort of intersection, that, that, that connection point. But for me, truly, if I had a choice, it's, I'm going to give you an imagery do you, have any of you ever swam in, in the sea sort of near Greece and it's black and there's this thing called phosphor essence. It's like as if the stars fell out of the sky and it's like diamonds in the water. Like if you shake your hands, it's like the water lights up with electricity. It's like it's, it's, it's a, an algae. And in a way for me, if you look at the Zero Project just for a second and imagine we have all the solutions. So if you join all of these dots up, right? And this is the point, this is the decade of collaboration together. And we intertwine and we interfuse and we work together. Then the voice will be unstoppable. So for me, I think it's all of these partnerships, all of these connections, and everybody has maybe a different way of relating to it. Make room for that. But our common value is inclusion means everyone for all. You cannot say you're inclusive if you only have one part of the population, but we need to find a way to bring everybody into that same place without threatening or being aggressive or canceling somebody out. Thank, Thank, you. Somebody Thank out. you. Yeti, you want to answer. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Yeti, you want to answer. Actually, I was expecting Harlan to say it, uh, and I, I'm gonna pick it from her. So. Yeah, I fully agree with the meaning where they are because we don't have to expect them to come into our world and to understand what we want or where we want to be. So that, that's critical. But something that strikes me once we, when we talk over a coffee is that how, how could you turn all these billionaires, millionaires into a change into the concept of right and into a concept of inclusion? So she was telling me the magic and allow me to disclose that magic. So the first thing she would say that is, okay, I'm here to tell you that your business is at risk. So the word risk is commonly everyday viewed thing for um, business uh, CEOs and think, okay, risk, my business, come on, how? And they will open their ears. I don't think we use the word disability. She, she doesn't use the word disability and neither I. I don't tell people oh, your disability or something like that. Just so, you know, talk people into their language, put them into their own zone because we're not taking them to Mars. We're just keeping them in the same universe that we're sharing. So telling them into their own language, putting things into their context really matters. Otherwise, they are they have their own prejudice about the world disability, about even the wheelchair, you know, that uh, Rama was mentioning about. 
or the screen reader, whatever. So take them out of that prejudice and take them into a common space where they can feel comfortable and you also can do. I agree totally. Martin Rama, you want to add something on this? Yeah, um, I think uh, absolutely. And, you know, to sort of pick up on the next question that's coming through about starting without, you know, without any budgets, um, I think to try and roll the answer into one, um, in we, we run this thing called creative leadership. And in that, we talk about three modes of action that come from head, heart, and hand. Um, I, I think, Caroline, I'm just 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 copying you here but um, it's 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 not it's not to not to rely on the head not to powerpoint people to death or report them to death it it's actually about the heart and the hand and by that i mean the heart is personal connection and personal stories um you know i always remember we got a we got a a project in um, to do with autism, our very first project on autism, design and autism, two words you never heard in the same sentence. And we got a car company to pay for it because it turned out the managing director in the UK had an autistic 13-year-old. And it was just that personal story, that ambition of what we were trying to do. And we said, we, didn't, we don't know where this will end up, but we want to ask the questions go on the journey, will you come with us? And, and that was just a moment when I really, really realized that power of connection. Um, so sharing stories and hearing stories is important. The hand is another one. So um, just seeing what other people have been doing and doing it yourself. So you don't need big, big budgets to start, you need a big heart, um, you need a big statement. You know, in 1994, inclusive design was defined. That's relatively recently. All of us, most of us on this um, Zoom call, I assume, um, were, were alive at that point. <laughs> um, it's in living history. Uh, and why, why has it grown? Well, when we started, it was a twinkle in the eye of three people sitting under a tree talking about it. Uh, and... And um, Gandhi said, you know, the best and most solid work was done in the wilderness of minority. So embrace the wilderness of minority uh, and bringing it home personally. You know, my father passed away last year and in his eulogy wanted to talk about life rather than death and why we were born. And one of the phrases that came out um, that has always stuck with me is, um, you know, you were born to give as well as receive and find beauty in the balance between the two. And this world of accessibility and inclusion is about giving and receiving. But the other phrase was, you were born to find grace in the darkest corners of your life. And I think, you know, it can feel dark without a big budget, without a community of people, you know, being a lone person on Zoom in your bedroom. But that is also an opportunity to be in that wilderness of minority, to find the grace in those dark corners. And there's always a solution to act. And dare I say it, even in that situation, it drives you forward even more. Thank you very much, Rama, for that. Um, uh, and I would like uh, to ask, uh, Martin, Martin, I, I see that he's uh, not here, so so uh, uh, I will uh, I will say something. I think that uh, Martin will will very much agree with it. Um, you know, the first zero project that I attended, uh, and the question that we just received was, uh, if you're a person, one person without big budgets or big teams, what can you do to create an impact? What should be your first step? And uh, I always go back to the first zero project I attended. Uh, there was an amazing conf amazing panel about earthquakes. And whoever has heard me uh, tell this story, I keep repeating it because I think this is the essence. 
Um, uh, in that panel, there was uh, an amazing avatar technology uh, introduced uh, doing sign language, because I understand in Japan, you cannot have even the delay of the human sign language. They needed something immediate. So they developed, you know, I, I assume uh, millions of dollars uh, spent on developing an amazing looking avatar that really saves lives. But the amazing thing for me was on the same stage at Zero Project was a guy, I think, from Malaysia who also had to deal with earthquakes. Now, he lived in a place one, sto one story above ground, and the elevator was very far away from his door. And there was uh, uh, stairs just in front of his door. So what he did is he built the stairs so uh, his armpits are the width of the rails of the stairs. And whenever there was an earthquake or some emergency, he just slid down on his armpits and pulled his wheelchair with a rope. So you have the million dollar avatar and you have the how much does a rope cost and they both got the same stage in zero project they both were able to inspire and show people how small ideas small budgets can still have and form a ripple effect and i can tell you that that rope that investment in a rope in a way is what brought the Access Israel webinars, the, the international network that we're doing. Because when I saw him, I understood that everyone can. You just have to believe. You just have to say it out loud. And you know what? You have to register to Zero Project for the next uh, session and uh, try to uh, uh, share your best practices. Because the idea is that I think Hector said it also. Talk about it. Share. Don't keep it in the draw. You have to take it out there to the world. Uh, and I think that that is uh, a tip that at least Martin and the amazing Zero Project team uh, has taught me. Uh, Hector, and could I say something yes, really important? Just connected to Yuval and to the and to the person who asked that question about being a single person on your own and no budget. Actually, every single one of us here as entrepreneurs, all of us know what that feels like. So just want to be really clear. Yuval and Rama and Yeti, myself, we all were a single person at one point with an idea on our own with no budget, okay? And I think Yuval, it would be brilliant just to hear because when Yuval had his accident, he was a single person with an idea and wrote a letter. And so my piece to you is reach out because you're not on your own. Go find somebody to speak to. That's the piece because having somebody to share it with, you are not on your own. And none of us had budget to begin. So I, I just want to acknowledge that because it is really, really hard. I just want to say that. Thank you very much. That's exactly a great point uh, to end with. Guys, what I'm calling now everybody participating, this is not the end of our dreaming session. I'm inviting each and every one of you to send us, upload, and uh, uh, Sharon on the chat of uh, Zero Projects will upload their uh, email address. We want 10 to 15 second videos of your dreams or your tips. We want to bring your voice together, everyone from everywhere around the world, and let's dream together. Let's create a future and act upon it and help others reach those same uh, dreams and goals. Thank you very, very much for my amazing friends. Thank you for being my friends and for uh, inspiring us all and helping us move this uh, dream forward. Thank you very much, guys. And again, this thank you for dream forward. Project, thank uh, you very team. much, guys. And again, thank you for an amazing Thank project. you. Bye-bye.